Cat Boost might be the easiest supervised learning algorithm to use today on large tabular data. It is highly parallelizable, it automatically deals with missing values and categorical variables, and even more than XGBoost, it is built to prevent overfitting. If you throw some data into it without much work, you are pretty much guaranteed to get state-of-the-art results. Well, this assumes that your data is training ready, but even then, it is almost too good to be true. I made a previous video where I explained how the gradient boosting algorithm works, and another video where I explain how XGBoost works. CatBoost very much builds on top of those two algorithms, so make sure to check them out. Now, let's dig into how CatBoost works. Let's get into it. CatBoost is another boosting tree algorithm that has been introduced in 2017 by Yandex. Yandex is a Russian company. CatBoost introduced two different techniques. The first one is a target encoding technique that allows to encode categorical variables in an efficient manner. The second one is called ordered boosting. They recognize that one of the problems of the boosting algorithm is to use the error that we measure on the previous iteration of the boosting algorithm, and this leads to a special case of data leakage. At each iteration of the boosting algorithm, we reuse the same targets, and this leads to overfitting. So let's see how they address this. So first of all, let's try to understand what is a target encoding for a categorical variable. The idea of a target encoding is that we could try to encode the categorical variable into a numerical variable by using the values of the target. So here we have a target that has different values, and here we have a specific categorical variable. The categories of this categorical variable are CA and AZ. Those are the two different categories that we have here. One way we could encode the categorical variable could be to replace the category by the average value of the target for each of the different categories. For example, we could replace CA here by the average of the target that we observe when we look at this specific category. The idea would be to linearize the categorical variable with respect to the target. But this introduced a concept of data leakage because we use the target to learn the target. But when we are using the model on a new unseen data, we don't have access to the target, so we cannot construct correctly the categorical feature. So whatever encoding we were able to build on the training data, we are not able to build on the testing data. The fact that we use information that we would not have if we were to use unseen data it's something that we call data leakage. So I want to show you the example of the leave one out technique that is used to target encode a categorical variable without using the information of the target. The idea is to compute the average of the target variable for the specific row without using the value of the target for that row. For example, I'm going to compute the encoded value for the category CA for this specific row by using the values of the other rows where CA appears. So we have two other instances where CA appears. We have this row where the target value is equal to 0.5, and we have this row where the target value is equal to 1. So the average value of the target for the category CA, if we are not using the value of the specific row, is 0.5 plus 1 divided by 2. So here we can replace this category CA by the average of the target when we are looking at the same category for other rows. Similarly, if we want to replace the value for this row here, we can look at the value of the target for the other rows. In that row, the target value is equal to 0.5, and in that row, the target value is equal to 1. So the average value of the target for that row is going to be 0.75. Similarly, we're going to compute the encoding for this CA category here by looking at the target value for this row, CA, it's 0.5, and this row here, the target value is 0.5. So the average of 0.5 and 0.5 is 0.5. So the encoding ends up to be 0.5. We can do the same thing for the category AZ. So we look at the other rows and we see that the target value for that category is 0.75 and 1. We take the average and we obtain 
0.875. We repeat this process for the other rows, and for this row, we end up with an encoding of 1. And we repeat this process for the last row, and we end up with an encoding that is 0.875. So here we were able to encode the categorical variable into averages of the target variable without using the value of the target for the specific row. So in principle, the encoding was not computed using the value of the target for the specific row, so we should not have any data leakage. In practice, this is not true. We observe that if we actually perform this encoding, we have a high data leakage process and we overfit on the training data due to this encoding because we are using information that is not available when we are predicting on unseen data. The technique that was introduced in CatBoost is called the expanding mean target encoding. It is a way to use a target encoding that is similar to the one we just saw, the leave one out, but it is meant to limit the impact of the data leakage. I thought it was easier to look at it in code. The idea is to compute the cumulative sum of the target per category of the column and the cumulative count of the target per category of the specific column. Here we remove the value of the target such that we are not using the target value of the specific row to compute the encoding. And what we do is we do something similar to an average. We take the cumulative sum and we divide by the cumulative count. And this is the encoding. So this is a very simple way to code the expanding mean target encoding. Let's dig into it to understand what actually is happening. In CatBoost, the first step is to train the different trees with different data sets. The way to build different data sets is actually to build different permutation of the training data. So for example, the first tree is built with a specific permutation of the training data. A permutation is basically shuffling the different rows of the training data. And the second tree is built with a different permutation of the training data. And each of the trees is built with a different permutation of the training data. So if we were to apply the typical tree building technique that we saw in XGBoost, a permutation of the training data would not have any impact. So they use a different permutation to introduce a fake time variable. Let me try to dig into it. Here we're going to look at the expanding mean target encoding. And we're going to consider one specific permutation of the data. The idea is that when we want to compute a specific encoding for a specific row, we're only going to consider the rows that appear before that specific row. That's why having permutations have an impact. Different permutations will lead to different encoding. So here we look at the first row of the category CA, and we look at the cumulative sum minus the value of the target, which is zero, divided by the cumulative count, which is zero. So we have an encoding value, which is zero. Let's look now at the encoding for the second value of CA. This time we're going to look at the sum of the targets for the same category for the rows that appear before the current row. And the only row that appears before is this one, where the target value is 0.5. And we only have one value, so we divide by one. So the encoding here is 0.5. We didn't consider this value of CA because the row appears after. Now, to encode this specific value of CA, we look at the rows that appear before. Only two rows appear before for this specific category. We have this row and this row, and we look at the target values for those specific rows, and we divide by the cumulative count of the category. So we have 0.5 plus 0.5 divided by 2, and we get 0.5. We do the same thing for the AZ category. So we look at the previous rows for the category AZ, there is none, so we end up with an encoding that is equal to zero. Similarly, we look at the second instance of the category AZ. There's only one row where we see this category before, so the target value is one. We put one here and we divide by one because there's only one row. Similarly, we look at the previous instance of the AZ category. We have one and 0.75, so we compute the average of 1 and 0.75, and we obtain 0.875. So 
So we did something very similar to the leave one out, but we only considered the previous rows. Because each tree will have a different permutation of the training data, each encoding of the same variable will be different every time. And this will provide a protection against data leakage. This is a very efficient way to encode a categorical variable, and this will help learn the relationship between the categorical variable and the target variable. So what we just did was to take the cumulative sum and to divide by the cumulative count for each of the different categories in the categorical variable. Let's now look at ordered boosting. When we train trees in the gradient boosting algorithm, we train a tree, we generate a prediction from the new tree we predicted, and we generate the target for the next iteration by using the same tree. This means that we're going to use a target to learn the target in the previous iteration. And this leads to some kind of data leakage. And data leakage leads to overfitting. Gradient boosting and previous iteration of boosting algorithms are known to overfit quite a bit. And this is one reason why they overfit, because we tend to overly exploit the learning that we see in the training data. To minimize this effect, we're going again to consider the concept of permutations. So each of the trees are built with different permutations of the training data. This will allow to have different data sets with the same distribution for each of the different trees. Let's remind ourselves that when we want to find the split, we need to measure the gradient of the specific instance and we need to measure the Hessian of the specific instance. The gradient and the Hessians are measured by looking at the loss functions of the previous iteration of the boosting algorithm. The idea of ordered boosting is to compute the gradient and the Hessians by using loss functions that do not include the specific samples that we are trained to compute the gradient and Hessians for. Let me show you how we can do that. So when we have the feature set and the target, for each of the instances, we will have a gradient and a Hessian. And let's remind ourselves that here we have a specific permutation of the train data. And we're going to look again at computing the gradients and the Hessians in order. So if we want to compute the gradient and the Hessian for this specific instance, we're going to only use the instances that appear before that specific instance. Here we have only one row that appeared before, so we compute the gradient by using the row that appeared before. Similarly, we're going to compute the gradient and Hessian here by looking at the previous rows, but not the rows that appear after. And we're going to iterate this process, and we're going to compute the gradient and Hessian by only considering the previous rows in this specific permutation. This means that when we compute the overall loss for the parent and the children, we're going to take into account the gradients that are being computed in this way. This way the split is learned by avoiding to use the specific value of the instance. And we continue this process until the end, and we have all the gradients and Hessians. This way CatBoost is designed to minimize the data leakage that we see when we actually perform the boosting algorithm, and this allows CatBoost to be less overfitting on training data.